Welcome to the official podcast of the Brewmasters Club, craft brews and geek news. Sit back, pour yourself a pint, and let's get into it. Now here's the founder of the Brewmasters Club and your host, Donnie Gallagher. Welcome everybody uh, to another episode of the Brewmasters Club podcast. We're at Craft Brews and Geek News. Uh, this is the first week of November, so we're kicking off, man, I can't believe so much has flown by, but we are kicking off another fun month of beer drinking and beer pairings, of course. Um, join me, joining me this evening uh, will be Mr. Lausfan. How are you, sir? Doing well, absolutely. How are you? Doing well, my friend. And Mr. Ryan, how are you? I am doing fantastic. Happy November the 3rd, everyone. <laughs> it's a great day, man. We'll get into it in a second. Dane, yep. you're with us too, sir. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Happy man for 13. There you go. Hey, there's our guy. All <laughs> right. So we're getting into it. Um, this is a very unique day, as I just briefly mentioned a few minutes ago. Um, today, November 3rd, uh, 2016, is actually the third annual International Stout Day. So, of course, as, as a avid beer fans here, we, we do appreciate all things uh, craft and beer in general. And one of those great things is uh, is the stout. Uh, it's just a fantastic beer. And we've all brought something a little bit special, a little bit unique, something we've talked about before, something we have not. So we're going to get into that in our uh, beer section of what we talk about, what we're drinking, what we're going to drink. Um, but for the rest of the episode here, we're just going to kind of dive into it. We talk all things beer news, um, geeky news, of course, uh, different national stories, local flavors, and of course, um, you know, all of our favorite nuggets of technology and interesting bits that are going on in the world today. Um, kicking things off, of course, like I just mentioned, International Stout Day. Congratulations, guys. Everybody raise a glass. That's what I'm talking hey. about. Hey, oh. Definitely yeah. love some stouts. So we'll get into these again <laughs> in a second. Um, but I wanted to just touch on this because, you know, us as the Brewmasters Club, we, we, we lead a very similar effort here, um, at least in Tampa Bay, or at least now we've expanded from, from our first year event um, on February 15th. We've expanded kind of nation or not nationwide, statewide, with the help of a couple of large distributors, uh, one of which being our, our great friends at JJ Taylor, uh, which is one of the biggest uh, distributors here in, in the South Florida region. So big thanks and big shout out to them for helping us support Florida Craft Beer Day. Now only being a few months away, we will talk more about that, but it basically uh, is all is a kind of an international holiday just like this, but it celebrates the first brewery opening in the United States, which happened to be in the great state of Florida, in the great city of Tampa, uh, about five miles from my house, five miles from uh, Ryan's house, and just right here in Tampa. So it's great. But today's not about that. Today is about International Stout Day. So, so guys, what do you think? Are you loving stouts today? Has anyone? I, I know I've tried a couple at least uh, so far. You guys loving stouts today? Ryan, absolutely. It, Absolutely. I am, I, I'm a huge fan of stouts. I think I've shared a couple on the podcast in the last couple of weeks. And uh, so finding out today that it, it was International Stout Day and uh, getting that word out there, spreading the great message of that, um, I picked up something really nice that I can't wait to share in a little while. So. Fantastic. I know that the uh, the panel here is kind of split on, on their preference of stouts. I'm just happy that we're all trying stuff again. That's the goal that we're trying to do is to get you to get out of your comfort zone and try some different things. But uh, first off, a little background on International Stout Day. Um, basically, it's been celebrated for its third year uh, this year. Thursday, today, November uh, 3rd, um, celebrates International Stout Day, of course. And just like vineyards, you know, we like to tell the story uh, to people, uh, the weather, the land, the history, all sorts of stuff that tells the story of brewers and the people that are enjoying what brewers create, which is beer. Um, having a day dedicated to a beer style is really just accelerating the excitement of craft beer. Um, and we just love to talk about things like this. Um, so International Stout Day is a worldwide celebration with the iconic beer style stout you've probably seen it in a pint glass looks like motor oil uh drinks like coffee uh very cool stuff if you like it some people don't and that's okay i suggest you try it with oysters because it's amazing um but this this kind of celebration takes place every day with stouts and people learning about stouts and, and trying to appreciate them um you've got the history of guinness and all that kind of stuff that happened in, in ireland and, and how it's transferred over to the united states and how people just really stick to this if you look at almost every brewery in america craft beer big beer whatever it is everybody makes a stout there's got to be a reason behind that stouts are great so I like them. I started loving them. I've transitioned into several different beer styles that have now replaced it as my favorite beer. But Lausman, you, you've been giving us the, gr the, the grunge face here since we started. So please explain to me your opinions of stouts. And it's completely okay, man. This is our yeah. podcast. Talk about our opinions. And you might not be alone. So so share, share what you feel about stouts, my man. Absolutely. So I 
absolutely enjoy craft beer. Uh, it's become my favorite kind of beer, uh, all, all different kinds, all sorts of different things and, you know, IPAs and just all, all the whole gambit really. But when I get the stouts, that's when I have a bit of an issue. Bit of a doubt. I, oh, I missed that one. I was trying to take the high road, but apparently we're just sticking to garbage tonight, which brings up stout beer. Uh, I just don't I don't like it. It's just not for me. I don't. So first off, I'm not a coffee drinker. Uh, I don't yeah. even like sweet things. I mean, so I can barely drink Mountain Dew, but apparently I need to for my lifestyle. Um, <laughs> uh, you know. I just can't. I can't get into it. I've I've never been able to drink either a dark porter or I, I just can't drink a stout either. They just they both taste like coffee to me. And I'm looking at the stout that I actually brought tonight, and I just I've tasted it a couple times, and every time is just not good. Painful. It's painful. It's it's dark coffee overtones. I just I can't get into it. It tastes like I'm eat, drinking a tiramisu. Um, but like a really heavy one, which is bad. Yeah. My book. I mean, that's, that's just on me. That's okay, man. I don't know. And I don't know how far out of your comfort zone and Dane, we'll go to you next. But while, while, while Dane's thinking about what he's going to say about stout, I just wanted to say, you know, it's, it's not, it is not a beer for everyone. And there's different attributes about the beer that once you kind of understand, you, you can literally take that knowledge like we have in our app and, and you can apply it and say, Oh, maybe I'll try, you know, that barbecue chicken with this, this ice colder stout, you know, and, and see what, what happens there with those flavors. Cause the, the, the thing with stouts that I think helps people get into it really. And we're not here to convince you of what beer you do or don't like Laos man. It's simply that, you can you can experiment with stuff, and that's all we're about is just to try different things. And by doing so, you might you might find something you like. But Dane, what do you like? What do you not like about about stouts, my man? So with stouts, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the powerful flavor. Probably the same realm as Nick, in a sense of taste. I'm not a huge coffee beer fan, and I think with a lot of stouts, you, you get that. The particular stout I'm drinking tonight, and I'll get into it later. It's it's a very stout to drink. It's not very powerful at all. Uh, it's full-bodied, very smooth, and that's the kind of style I like. Anything yep. more than that, I get a little hesitant on, and I usually uh, pick a different beer to drink. So I'm not a huge fan. The thing with stouts is, you know, Ryan texted us earlier, hey, it's – I was like, oh, shit, I got to go get a, a freaking stout. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I got to find the easiest, smoothest – and because, like I said, I'm not a I'm not a huge a huge fan of it. So, yep, that's all right, man. Ryan, why don't you wrap it up? What are you, what are your thoughts there? And then I'll I'll kind of um get us uh get us wrapped up with the stout conversation. Yeah, you know, for me, I drink black coffee on a daily basis. I don't so use do I. cream. I don't use sugar. Nope. And so for me, as I've gotten more involved with craft beer, as as Last Man has. I started off with the IPA and I gradually worked my way out. And then eventually I was like, Oh, well, let me, let me try this. And I didn't, I didn't know I was in my infancy. I was like, Oh, Guinness is a stout, you know, or, you know, it had the Guinness stout, extra stout is what I got. And then ultimately just led to other things and Sierra Nevada and all those other different ones. So I, I truly love stouts. It's my number two. So, yeah. Yeah. So a couple of things and I'll, I'll wrap it up quickly, but basically like my take on stouts, Yes, I, again, like you, Ryan, you know, I kind of started out on stouts and because when I worked for um, Budweiser, we had this uh, bare knuckle stout, you know, on tap. And it was really cool because it was kind of like a like a, the only thing that existed, at least on tap at the time in 2004 ish, that would be similar to Guinness. And it looked the same and it poured with the nitro and it had this beautiful kind of uh, this fizzle that happened with those little tiny nitro bubbles. And I think a, a good nitro stout is an amazing different craft beer um as dane mentioned and what we'll get into is is some of those smoother ones again like some of the big dogs um like guinness and stuff they do have that nitro that nitro finish and it, it, it what it does is it, unlike an ipa or anything else it, it those creamy tiny nitrogen bubbles that that give that nice little kind of uh, um i forget what it's called but it's like a like a little shimmer or, or whatever as they yeah. kind of settle it just makes a beautiful picture it makes a beautiful foam head and it makes it the, the image of it and the taste of it when it hits your, your lips and your mouth feel, it kind of gives it that like really creamy flavor in your head. And then you think it's this really creamy, heavy beer. Uh, you know, the, the odd thing is that stouts like Guinness example um, have about a hundred, they have about 12 more calories in a Bud Light. People don't really know that. So you think it's the most heavy beer you can drink because it looks so dark and it feels so heavy. 
but it's not. It's the roasted, the heavily roasted barley, which Ryan, when we were at Craft Life, we saw that. Remember, we brought that yes. paper, that plastic bag full of yeah. that that caramel, uh, dark roasted malt, and it does malt. taste like coffee. It tastes like chilled coffee. Now, I started drinking stouts before I dr- started drinking coffee black, so it's 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 a backwards compatible from for me because I didn't start drinking coffee and then like stout. I started drinking stout and then progressing to coffee, which I wish I could just drink stout all day instead of coffee, but <laughs> yeah. might do the opposite effect there in terms of caffeine. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, much might. The good news is, at the end of the day, us as what we're trying to accomplish here is that we're just trying to say, hey, man, it's International Stout Day because some guy said it was, and now three years later, it is an international movement, and that's great. And in that support, you know, we love all things craft beer, and, and regardless of what we get into here, and we actually are talking about the beers we chose for this evening, you got to appreciate stout. So one more cheers just to stout and international stout day. If you're listening to this any other day, besides here, 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 just, just grab a stout sometime and try it out. Cause Whoa. Yikes. Stout it out. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I caught myself. Back pocket. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Figured that one out at two 30. Now right. nighttime. Was that when I texted? <laughs> an hour before in. So moving on to our next and first actual article here for the uh, the craft beer side. Um, what we want to talk about tonight was uh, a new attractive brewery, which is trying to bring in some of the, this is out of Indianapolis, and they're trying to bring on in some of the Bud uh, Miller uh, generic beer drinkers to craft beer, which if you think about that from a standpoint of supporting solely craft beer, yes, you want to be like, no, that's stupid. You know, those guys are, are just trying to, to, to be big beer or whatever, but they're not. They're trying to get, people that don't necessarily like craft beer to say, Hey, here's a similar product, something that you're used to give, give it a try and see what you think. And we, as, as an organization and, and what we do we have to support that. And we do. And so I thought this was, this is really interesting to talk about, but um, it was founded by three engineers and they actually launched what's called center point brewing company. Um, and it's a goal of, of pulling those mainstream beer drinkers into the craft beer world, which again, we are huge proponents of. Um, so it's a very cool thing, um, and it's and it's a very neat craze that they kind of created. Um, I have a quote here, and then I'll kind of pitch it to you guys to see what you think. But what these guys are trying to do is, this is quote unquote, we're trying to grow the craft beer pie by introducing those Bud and Miller drinkers to craft beers. Now that was the co-owner Jonathan Robinson that said that. He said there's plenty of room to grow, especially if our quality is very high. So Ryan. What do you think about this? Again, looking to you because you 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 know you've been in the spectrum. You follow the business news. You know what do you think, man? Like, is this a good motive? Is this not a good thing? Is this something we should support? Should we advertise this? Should we entice others to do the same? What are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, th- I think it's a great way as as their goal is to introduce people into, hey, you know, you you drink these Bud Lights, you drink these McUltras, and which is a great beer, uh, all the time. Why not experience something different? And if we're in the business of pairing, you know, beer with food and getting those full flavor profiles out there. Um, I think it's a great way, especially if, you know, cause it sounds like they've got a really good menu of food to introduce people on a lighter basis. It's a lower alcohol, you know, content, you know, around the fours and fives that people are used to with their Bud Lights and Bud Weisers. Um, the flavor profiles are there that they, they even said that like, it's not as hoppy in, in their, you know, IPAs and things like that. So it's a nice way to kind of segue into that. And, you know, We've all talked about it over the course of the last couple of weeks. I think we'll even talk about it here in a little while. The whole craft beer bubble. If there's more people drinking beer that's or craft beer, then there's not so much of a bubble because everybody's going to find their way into different niche, uh, you know, niche beers. Like a lot of people are going gravi- to gravitate towards the IPAs. A lot of people are going to find different porters that they like. A lot of people are going to find different stouts. So it's a nice way to build that bridge. And I thought that it was a really neat uh, idea that I would like to see more of. So that was my first thoughts. Yeah, no, that's I mean, that's good insight. Mr. Dano, do you have any, um, any kind of report on, and is it, and it, it's just your personal opinion, but, but you know, what do you, what do you think about this kind of a, of a mantra? I think it's cool. I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's, I think it's Ryan was saying it's a certain niche. And if you can fill that niche, uh, it'll work. If you don't, it won't. I think it's certainly going to appeal. It'll certainly appeal to to all of our lady friends, you know, people that may not like necessarily craft beer, um, but maybe they like a very easy to drink light beer or something like that. Um, it doesn't make it any less craft if there's a passionate brewer behind it that's putting his heart and soul into it and making a, a quality, you know, great product. Um, Mr. Lossman. Uh, yeah. So I really like this because coming from a background where, you know, 
I would I would follow my friends. I I would show up to the you know places. I don't mean to single any out, but places like World of Beer, places like um, you know some craft breweries. I you know my friends would be there, and I'd be like, oh okay, a brewery sounds like a good time, or sounds like a you know a beer distributor. Like that that sounds like fun. Like I like beer. I'd get there, and I'd find out that you know it it's here in America, and it doesn't sell. Budweiser, Bud Light, or anything that I'm used to at the time, back before I used to enjoy craft beers, that was problematic for me. I mean, I began to hate World of Beer, uh, just to single them out. I mean, because I would go in there and I'd be like, hey, do you have Bud Light? And they go, no. And I go, well, then how in the heck are you World of Beer? Like, <laughs> sorry, but <laughs> you're, you're a liar and you need to be called out on this because apparently no one's done it before. So... It was a huge issue for me because anytime my, my friends would say, yeah, I'm going to World Beer, that's great. I'd go, okay, no, I'm not going there. They don't sell anything I drink, and they're called World of Beer, so that makes zero sense in my book. I think this place is awesome. <laughs> I want yeah, them big supporter. Yeah, yeah so, so my wife, Jenny, I mean, she, she would appreciate it too. So, so it's, it's cool, man. I, I definitely think it's a neat angle. Um, again, as long as the passion and the quality is there, I have no qualms with that. So I think it's all no. good. And Laos, uh, you brought up a couple of memories for me from a few years back when we first all started getting together for that world of beer. Uh, I felt the same way. And the only beer that I felt comfortable drinking and nothing against Bell's, but it was always Bell's Oberon. Anytime we'd go there, it was really that. Good beer. And <laughs> Fantastic. It is very good beer. And I think even when, um, what's that? Elephant beer. What's that one? Um, Delirium. Delirium. That was the only two that I would get because I didn't know about anything else. So not bad choices, though, my man. It's no, so, I was taught so well. Yeah. I was taught very well, but still, yeah, very limited. You know, when you only know two beers out of a whole world. Yeah, you know, no, of no beer. and that's and that's all good <laughs> stuff too. So, so we, we've kind of we've actually I mentioned I think we mentioned AB now a couple of times, which which is crazy this this particular episode. But the next story that we have is that there's an AB a Angela Bush report that came out that said craft beer is slowing now again caution that with it's an Anheuser-Busch report that came out but mm -hmm. the stats that they came to, to produce is that that the craft beer bubble is um, the burst that everybody's been talking about here is you know afraid to be on the horizon here so over the past 10 years it might be here um, Anheuser-Busch InBev the largest beer company in the world admitted that the craft beer market has slowed down for the three months straight now again these guys are chasing a 10 month low or 10 year excuse me 10 year chase you know of, of all their 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 market share and all their uh, shelf space kind of dissipating so they're the ones putting out this report but um, there is a natural point where, where you know the, uh, a market like this can only grow so much told they basically said that consumers are just overwhelmed and that they, there's too much choice the industry is swamped there's too many brands too many styles and not enough quality um, now again inbev, AB InBev, they're the company that bought eight craft breweries from 2011 to 2016, and not to mention they also partnered or well, merger with SAB Miller, the next largest beer company in the world. So, you know, maybe it's not a huge deal. This report, you know, is maybe nothing, but I, I think it's a little bit interesting um, that the, uh, the the competition, you know, there is kind of saying, you know, this this craft brewery thing may have a may have a stop. Um, the trends all show that craft beers having a nearly 15 year rise and it stayed completely or well, relatively steady. Um, but it might be time for correction. So, I mean, what do you guys think about that? And again, keep the AB in mind. Um, Ryan, go ahead. I, I see you smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep, I mean, every time we go over it and I just touched on it, it I keep smelling more and more BS to be honest <laughs> with you. I mean, not to take anything away from those companies that have been around for years, but if there was a problem, then, you know, they wouldn't be merging with all these craft beers. And Donnie, I know that you had said eight, and that was as of today, it's now nine because AB <laughs> InBev has actually bought out um, Carbach Brewery out in Texas, one of the largest craft breweries in Texas. So, you well, know, they're not going to stop either. <laughs> they're not because no. they know that they can bring on those products because people are drinking those products. So if that's any, anything, it's a great way for them to segue and have as many outlets to create revenue as possible, which is a great thing business-wide. Sure. Sure. Totally love it. Totally on board. But we've got to I, – I think personally, and again, my perspective, we've got to stop uh, really harping on this craft beer bubble because, you know, I went to a place today. I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk to uh, – call them out. It's Lucan's out in Clearwater. They've got a couple of locations. 
tons of different styles of beer. They also sell liquor and things of that nature, but it's a great place to get really good priced craft beer and they had a ton of it. So podcast wise, I'm excited because I know that I've got a good source to go to, to have yeah. a plethora of craft beers that we could talk for, uh, talk about throughout the year. And I'm sure uh, Laos and uh, Donnie and Dane all feel the same way. So I don't think that there is a cap. I think with all the different styles out there, and uh, again, with AB and Bev now buying out this other craft brewery, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to end, but yeah. that's, that's my opinion. So, yeah, Mr. Dano, what do you feel about that? There's kind of two sides in my head with this. Uh, if AB keeps buying out these craft breweries, I think the title craft brewery off of them, if it's owned by AB, I think that's kind of a, I'm trying to, uh, the other side of me thinks, you know, I'm kind of in the same boat as a lot of consumers. Three, I'm, you know, more of a novice with craft beer. And sometimes, yeah, I get overwhelmed uh, with all the, all the choices and crap. But I think that's what's fun about craft beer is, is all the choices. Yep. And that's why it has that label. You can't, you can't really get rid of that label if, if that, that's what it is. And if AB buys that label out, then obviously it takes that label away. And, yeah. and that's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah, yes and no. I agree. And I'll, I'll chime in after Lost Man. Lost Man, you got any, any views on this? Uh, yeah, I do have a couple of views <laughs> on this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, my, my, main, my main question is, you know, how, how long does it take for a beer – like a craft brewery to get on Walmart status. And like, what I mean by that is like how long until they can just say, Oh, well, you know, it's, it's made here and then shipped elsewhere. Like, and well, just Walmart, they, they have their own craft beer selections. They've got three different beers that they brew. I which are all crap. Yeah. Which are all crap, but <laughs> you know, they, they're trying to get into it too. Yeah. So. I've walked I into it. I just thought that the, yeah, right well, you cut me right on off. So <laughs> nah, that's fine, dude. <laughs> what I'm saying is though, is honestly, I've walked into a marathon gas station and I saw their craft beer selection was replaced with Miller and Bud Light. And I was appalled. I was like, what are you doing? And I even asked the girl and she said, well, you know, we don't have a lot of freezer space. And I was like, well, that's good because beers are supposed to be refrigerated. So <laughs> you shouldn't do anything with a freezer. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should probably not be arming this counter right now. Like you should probably just be somewhere else. Like, but, um, but that, that, you know, I, I still go back to the fact that I, I would love for just, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't really like the fact that, uh, that, that they would be doing this. Like, I, I just don't, yeah. I, I don't know. No, I get, I get you, man. So th there's a couple points to raise, and you guys all had, you know, very valid stuff. So, lost first off, how do you, how do you get on the shelves of Walmart? Uh, distributorship, mass production, and there's actually like stipulations behind Walmart where you actually you actually have to be able to produce and distribute X amount of quantity nationwide, and that is a stipulation between putting them on the shelves and the Ryan and merchandising. You can kind of understand that, but but again, to Dane's point, you know, when AB comes in and says, "Hey, man, we're going to buy you out." You know, you got to think it for any business and any any business there is. You you go into to the to the to the business ownership sector or whatever, become an entre entrepreneur. Instead, of, essentially, you can sell your business and make money. So, at the end of the day, are you mad at the Goose Island or are you mad at the you know that that Texan brewery that that sells out to, to AB? No, you're not because you're getting mass distribution. You're getting mass uh, you know a placement in places like Walmart, and you're going to get your beer brewed maybe in in Brew Hub here in Tampa, so it can be distributed to the southeastern United States. I mean, that's how it happens. That's how a small brewery becomes big. That's how Cigar City gets sold in California. I mean, those things kind of have to happen. But at the end of the day. I don't think it necessarily changes the craft brewery to become a non-craft brewery if AB owns it. I think as long as, again, there's those passionate brewers there, the stockholders that are, that are pumping money into that brewery don't change who's brewing it. Now, with that said, there's a thing like Goose Island or, or some of these uh, Rolling Rock or these other breweries that, that, that you know, are owned by AB, and now they're brewed elsewhere. And again, like we've touched on it in so many episodes, it, it, when you move it you know, to another facility or in states away or, or thousands of miles away, does the quality change? Does the water change? Does the, the passion that was once in that beer change? Not necessarily. 
Um, is it a great thing that, that AB is going around scooping up all the world's best breweries? Probably not. But guess what? As a, as a good brewery, case in point, Cigar City, you've got options. They had a deal with AB, and they had a contract with AB who just farted around for two weeks. And when that contract ex- extension ended, they, the next day they signed that deal with Oscar Bru- Blues. And I'm telling you, Oscar Blues? Oscar Brewing. And, and, and I'm Please. telling you. <laughs> Five, ten years from now, Cigar City, along with Oscar, will Oscar already is, will be a national brand. And I think that is great for beer. So AB buying these up doesn't exactly mean that it's bad science or bad business for, for these craft breweries. What it does do is allow other craft breweries, like a Cigar City or Oscar, to, to find new ways to, to combat these giants, to, to step in the ring with, with these big guys and go toe-to-toe. So I think it presents kind of a, a unique challenge. But yes, we will lose some, some nice quality small breweries, but at the end of the day, it doesn't, as long as the quality is there, which a, a conglomerate like AB is not going to ruin quality, you know, it may not be the worst thing to have national distribution. So that's the only tip of the hat I can give to that deal. Otherwise, I think their yeah. their their claims are completely bogus. Um, well, yeah, and, and you also said, you know, with them merging with with ABM Bev, their access to better quanti- uh, quality ingredients is there as well. We've talked about that in the past. Uh, I was just going to bring this up because uh, you know I was thinking about it. And Dane, feel free to correct me if you do your own research on this, but. Um, you know, my theory is because I picked up this, it's a blue moon cappuccino oatmeal stout and it's a limited release. I picked it up yesterday. I had it. It wasn't very good. And a lot of people though will buy blue moon because they like their product because uh, you know, they're, they're used to the traditional stuff. So my theory is, and I think this is where ABM Bev is doing differently. They're going after craft breweries because those craft breweries have different beers that they're very good at brewing. Whereas blue moon, they only really have the one. Uh, well, they're owned or, by Miller. Well, so. but still, they only they, they really only have the one or two. Well, that's a, that's a good point. But they're trying to experiment with these other beers and and try to make a name for themselves. Because again, it's all about how many people can you reach. How you know? Yeah. Uh, and and different flavor profiles. So that's it, a good point too. And I, I wasn't opi- sure if they were or not. So. No, in my opinion, Blue Moon is the equivalent to Shock Top for AB. It's yeah, the Mil- it's the Miller equivalent that's saying, hey, we've got this craft thing kind of working for us. Let's do these twisted pretzels and these oatmeal stouts or whatever you say. And it may not be the best beer, but it will be a drinkable beer that that is mass ready for consumption. Right. And that's one thing that you can say for that. So so our wives and, and whatnot can, can sample these and drink these and be okay with it. But <laughs> Bossman, did you have one final idea on this? Oh, no. Um, okay, I didn't know if you did. Yeah, it's a little too craft for me. I mean, I, I just, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, I, you know, when I hear, you know, Anheuser-Busch getting involved with craft beer, I, I, I just hope they stay what they were. I mean, I, I don't know. I, it's not, this, is, this isn't a conversation for me. Yeah, well, there was one point in time, 1886 or whatever, when they were actually considered the craft beer. So we'll just leave it at that. But um, we're, we're going to move on to... <laughs> To uh, another inter- kind of interim section here, which is what we always talk about every week. Um, it's our app and local news. So this is just an introduction to those new listeners that may not know about us, but we are the Brewmasters Club, and our whole existence um, is to uh, get folks involved and get folks kind of interested in different craft beers and help grow their their particular taste. You may be an AB guy or a, a Miller guy or a Blue Moon guy or whatever, Heineken, so have you. We are trying to say that there are other beers out there similar to what we pushed for International Stout Day. You know, it, it is just a craft beer is so diverse and so unique that you can literally walk down the street, throw a stone, hit a new brewery and fall in love with something like we have done several times. We've gone to Craft Life. We fell in love. Cigar City. We fell in love. Big Storm. There's a Copper Tail. There's a whole bunch of stuff just here in Tampa alone that, that I can fall in love with and say this this one beer I could drink for the rest of my life. What we do here as a company, the Brewmasters Club, is actually try to influence others. The listeners here, the people that visit us online, um, our fans, you know, Facebook followers, all that kind of stuff. Anybody that's out there, try something new because you never know when the the fancy might hit you. And, and that's just it. So that's kind of what we do. Um, transitioning into that, what we do here is we uh, sample some beers. So uh, again, in the theme of, of International Stout Day, um, Mr. Ryan, you've hinted on it a couple times. Do you want to lead us off with what you brought to the table, quite literally, this evening? <laughs> I would be glad to. For my uh, international stout day, I have brought to the table the Lagunitas Imperial Stout. And uh, here's the bottle here for all those that, that can see it. Um, it comes in at 9.9%. It's uh, unlimited release. So 
I'm pretty sure that means available quite frequently, but I wanted to tie it into the Chicago Cubs winning the World Series for the first time in 107 seasons, 108 years, if you want to calculate it that way. Whatever you got to do, count the days, count the months. It's a very, very long time. Um, But because Lagunitas, of course, is uh, brewed out of Chicago, Illinois, uh, I wanted to give a tribute out to that. I've had a couple of sips of this so far. It's very smooth. It's very strong. And I've actually... I know I shared the narwhal a couple of weeks ago. So if you've been keeping up with us, you know that I, I had that. Uh, it's, it's, I think probably about four times better than that. Not to wow. turn Nevada down. Uh, and I know four times doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually very good, very full flavor, very rich um, in, in so many different ways. Not a lot of coffee notes. So that's a, you know, for the non coffee drinkers out there, you might be okay. You might be happy with that. Um, but definitely if you can get your hands on it, it's the Imperial stout. It's very good. And uh, go Cubs. Congratulations. Congratulations, indeed. Right. What are you going to drink next, sir? What are we going to drink? What are we drinking? What oh, are you gonna um, drink next? so what I'm going to drink next, I actually, uh, I was going to get it, but I figured I'd go with the Chicago theme here. Uh, but uh, there's the, um, I'm forgetting the name now. It's the, the Denver uh, Brewing Company that I that, that uh, we talked about a little while ago. Uh, no, not that one. I'll remember it later. But it's, they actually have... Uh, a stout. I'm trying to remember the name. It was like a big abominable snowman on the side of it. Uh, if the I, Yeti stout. The Yeti stout. Thank you. Yeah. I yeah, was going to get fantastic. that too. It's fantastic. And, um, I know I'm going to buy that tomorrow when I go back to Lucan's uh, in Clearwater. So shout out to Lucan's. Great service, great people, and uh, great craft beer selection. If you guys are in the Tampa Bay or Clearwater area, definitely check that out. So that's what I'm going to get next. Mr. Uh, Lousman, to your great uh, dismay, what did you uh, bring this evening? Give it to us quick. (laughs) Yeah, I'll try and keep it quick. So, unfortunately, I was forced to drink a uh, drink, forced to drink a stout, and I brought the Weyerbacher Tiny, which is a uh, put it up there for YouTube. Yeah, there we are. Follow us on YouTube, guys. Check out every episode. The Weyerbacher, a Weyerbacher Tiny. Uh, Did a little research on it. Uh, So basically, this is a Belgian-inspired Imperial Stout. Um, Yeah, it's got 11.8 ABV. Uh, Got huge, and I will overemphasize huge, chocolate and roasted notes. Uh, Basically, just... um, it, it is uh it's got a little bit of belgian in there which to be honest with you i couldn't really taste so uh it, it's very smooth i mean you know what i did i'll be honest with you guys i walked into my my local craft beer hangout place and i said hey look i go i gotta have a craft beer that's a stout and i go i don't want to be here you don't want me here i go let's just get me out the door <laughs> And the guy said, well, I want you to be here. And I said, I'm sorry for being rude. I, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> and so, like, so I walked out with this. You know, in a nutshell, I, in the past, I haven't been able to drink stouts, like, at all. Like, I can't drink a nitro uh, Guinness or anything like that. This is actually, you know, during this conversation that we've had tonight, it's actually been somewhat partially enjoyable. I mean, I understand that I'm not, I don't, I don't drink coffee. I understand that. I want everyone to understand that I don't drink coffee at all. And so things like this are weird for me, but actually, you know, the more it goes on, the more you drink it and kind of step on it a little bit, it kind of grows on you a little bit. Uh, You know, I wouldn't go buy one of these. I'm not going to, you know, talk down about any sort of brewery or anything like that, but I definitely wouldn't buy one, but you know, if I was forced to drink one, it like a bonfire in like May, that'd be cool. Ooh, with some like, s'mores. Yeah, yeah. See, you see s'mores, where I'm painting chocolate, this picture? It's, it's a yeah. perfect pairing. Yeah. Uh, Dane, are you uh, are you uh, you got anything for us tonight? Viewers, um, show you guys, get us draft. Uh, White special... can with a tortoise. Nice. Yeah, celebrating the famed Guinness campaigns of the 1930s and 50s. I don't know what happened in the 40s, but uh, <laughs> pretty cool can. I really like the can, actually. Too. I really like the artwork. Uh, Guinness Draft, you know, I was able to pick it up at the freaking grocery store pretty easily. Pretty cheap. It was like seven bucks for four-pack. 
uh, full bodied, very smooth, low carbonation. And um, that's, you know, sticking with our mass produced uh, beer, this is arguably one of my favorites as far as mass produced. So, yeah, it's a stout. Absolutely. I like it. And I'm not a huge stout fan. So, that says a lot because it's actually one of my more favorite beers. So, tonight is Guinness Draft. Does it have that uh, kind of dry finish? I, I noticed when I had the drought a while back, it had a drier finish than the extra stout. What, what's your take yeah. on that for you? I mean, there's there's kind of a, a, a fairly strong, a slight caramel flavor on the tongue. You can really just, it just sits there. Yeah. That's kind of the thing. Yeah, it, you know, real smooth. It doesn't feel like anything, but it, it kind of just sits on your tongue. Yeah. Which is really interesting. Yeah, it's it's acidic. I mean, you can definitely feel it on your tongue as, as the uh, the acid from it. Um, but it is it is a good a good beer, um, and I you know I had the the pleasure of uh, of actually going overseas and drinking it in uh, in Ireland at the factory, and I think I talked about this too. Once it goes over water, it's not the same. Uh, once it travels over water, but it, but it, it is a, a fantastic drinking beer. Like I said, it's a lighter beer. It's that coffee malt, that that real dark dark malt is just fantastic. So um, definitely a definitely good beer. But but yeah, I mean again, mass produced, easy to drink. That that's the goal. And they were originally you know one of the only stouts out there. So so good on them. And I'm glad that you uh, that you're trying it and that's one of your favorites. Um, what I actually brought, and I've talked about this, I think two or three times is my young's double chocolate stout. And I, I know I've told you guys about this before. Um, fantastic beer young's comes out of, uh, the UK and it's just, uh, I think it's, it's probably my all time favorite stout, uh, just because of the fact that it, it is extremely drinkable. It's not a nitro, but it's, it's only got five and a quarter percent. Um, but it's just, it's really drinkable and it's got such subtle chocolate kind of notes to it. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's very much like a stout. It's not as dry as, as Guinness is. It's not as light. Mm -hmm. It's it, not of a, of a light, of a light mouthfeel that Guinness has, but it's just a, a great drinking stout. Now I wouldn't drink this in May at a campfire, but I would definitely drink this in December at a campfire or something like that. I would drink it when it's <laughs> cold outside and I'm looking to be warmer inside. Um, it's just a, it's a fantastic, just black, dark stout. So um, that's all I have to say on stouts. I do and have a long history of, of enjoying them. So I don't know if you guys have any final final tidbits about stouts. Just uh, thank you for the people that created it like two or 300 years ago. Uh, we really appreciate it uh, in 2016. So cheers to those people and Let's keep on making more. That's what I say. Cheers to those guys. And just a tidbit, we talked about Chicago. And again, with the Cubbies being being so um, so relevant, I had to, when I swung by my liquor store and, and picked up this, uh, uh, my, my Young's, I also grabbed this, uh, which is the Goose Island Matilda. And it's a Belgian-style uh, pale ale. And it is, um, for a Belgian style and not a Belgian triple or anything like that, oh, man, Matilda goose island when you see it just get it it's in a four pack um it is not as we talked about belgians last last episode it's not as strong it's not as overpowering as a as a traditional like belgian style or belgian ale or whatever um but man seven percent alcohol so it'll get you it'll get the job done um but man it's just a great beer it's got it's got enough of the belgian kind of flavor and taste mixed with the pale ale piece so it makes it very drinkable that's what I'm drinking next. My next, I probably mean in like 10, 20 minutes. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's just really, it's just really good. It's really good. That's Dude, awesome. I am uh, pretty jealous because that looks amazing. Like yeah. I would love to sample that uh, as opposed to, uh, well, stout month. So yeah, I'm not going to say anything bad about that, but no, it's all good. Drink one. <laughs> it's all good. I'll, I'll save one for you. Um, but with, uh, with that said, we'll move on to our, to our, um, our geekier news section. Uh, we have just a couple articles here, uh, but some very cool stuff that came out this week. I don't know if you guys checked it out. Um, they now have this kick us off on our, our geek news segment. We love Star Wars. Everybody here in the, on the panel loves Star Wars, even though we're kind of split light side, dark side for Stouts. We really love Star Wars. <laughs> so I heard that. Um, <laughs> What they did, what, what the article that I saw that came out, and it's a video, which I'll, which maybe I'll, I'll just plug in here and play. Um, but basically, they have now indoor drones um, that have actual 
uh, infrared lasers on them so that when you're flying your drones around, you've got X-Wings and, and Millennium Falcon, and then you've got TIE Fighters and, and Star Destroyers or whatever they may be, all flying around in a giant warehouse with lasers actually shooting each other and keeping keeping track of points. And so some of this has, you know, an FPV you know, engagement piece of it, but man, um, bringing the magic of flight uh, to a whole new dimension with Star Wars uh, high performance laser battling quads. I'm reading the freaking description here from the product itself, um, but you can pilot your favorite Star Wars ships at speeds above 35 miles an hour, engage friends and family in exciting multiplayer laser battles. Um, each Star Wars battle quad is extremely detailed, hand painted, modeled to a quality finish, certified, numbered, and packed in a coll- collectible display box. I can't stop smiling just like talking about it because i'm so stoked (laughs) i think that we all need to get those (laughs) maybe it's just me no i agree i mean just dane's watching right now (laughs) what i'm what i'm afraid of look you know look at these things and how glorious they are 35 miles an hour is fast for a drone And the, you know, I might not even take it out of the box because <laughs> that's you know, fun. You automatically lose do, when we fight. Yeah, yeah. The first thing you're, you're gonna do, do is smash it into a freaking wall or Death Star that's hanging money. from a giant warehouse, which is what they had in the video. It's amazing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, these things are awesome. I love it. I love it. it looks, uh, it looks incredible. Instead of like light going to play, uh, what's it called, uh, laser tag. Just go yeah, play it's... friggin' battle quads, or right. whatever they call it. <laughs> Amazing. Lost man, what are your thoughts? Come on. Do you want one for uh, Christmas? Oh, uh, you know, possibly and and or definitely because love the video. <laughs> I mean, it was super cool. Uh, Millennium Falcon, kind of lame, but that's cool. I mean, I, you know, it's airplane noise, you know, sub in, but. Yeah, no, it, it was cool. I liked it. I loved it. I like the idea. I want to be able to play this in the backyard. Like, that's super cool. But I just, you know, at, at the end of the day, I mean, I feel like, I don't know. It, it's a very expensive way to play. So that that's kind of scary. I mean, you know, how, how there, much are these? Is there a cost? price on them? And I think they're I'm, still, yeah. I think they were still in pre order um, in the website. So you can them. Yeah, I think you reserve them. I don't know if there's a price listed online, but it's www.proppropelsw.com. So it's P-R-O-P-E-L-S-W.com. We'll link it in the description below. But damn, man, looks awesome. <laughs> Definitely. I agree. I think so- it was listed as uh, to reserve yours today, but no uh, obligation to buy once they actually come out with the price. So I was with you there. I was trying to find the price and I couldn't. Is there a minimum dollar value that you have to do to reserve this thing? Because I'll do it right now. I, I don't know. <laughs> it just said that, it said no purchase necessary. So. Oh, dude, I'm in. I'm going to reserve one right now. I think you guys should do the same. It might Rebel be about scum. $100 it's, if, if, if it actually it, is what it is. but It's twice for Rebel Scum because Rebel Scum just needs to get out. Re- well, tw- fine, I'm Rebel. I'm going to get a, a freaking X-Wing because I had four lasers. So eat that, Lyle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well... That's ridiculous because you guys are awful. So, so yeah, I didn't see this. Does it have a VR uh, mask to put on somewhere? It, I don't. I don't think it had a VR component yet. Like because, this is a first in- rendition of, but you know that's coming, where you can well, literally put that on and steer it, like you can with a lot of drones. Yeah, you, you've got to have that because there's actually a kids commercial. I wish I would have uh, remember what it was called, but I saw it the other day. I was like, oh, that would be really awesome. And there's a new kids toy that's coming out that has the VR. Um, you know, f- face camera glasses. there. Glasses, thank you. And and you can watch the drone fly. It's a kid's drone. It, it flies and they have these game things that you can set up. If they have that, you could be in the cockpit of the yeah, Millennium Falcon. I mean, yeah. just impeccable. Yeah. And then you don't have to worry about, I mean, you could buy two or three, but you don't have to worry about crashing into the wall because you'll see the wall coming. So. Yep. So we just got to get these, then buy some real estate space in the warehouse district. We'll be all set. Let's do it. Let's play it again. weekend. Drink some crap Let's beer. invest mm-hmm. half a mil. I'm down. Uh, <laughs> wait. Let no, me know no, when no. you have half a mil, and, and let's not invest it totally into that. We'll go to Cancun or somewhere nice. Dane, Dane you know, you're right. I think you were looking at stats. Give us, give us your, your closing arguments on this one. 
Look, man, 35 miles an hour, zero to 30 in less than three seconds. Jesus. <laughs> it's like a it's faster than a school zone. <laughs> they're kind of, they're kind of, they look kind of tiny. That's kind of the biggest flaw, I think, is how kind of small they are. Yeah, it looked like they're about a foot, foot and a half. Yeah. Well, for a drone, I mean, how big should they be? Three feet. I mean, if they're like bare minimum. Drone, yeah. Like, yeah. Every drone that's gonna take more power. Yeah. That's gonna make them more expensive. You know, that's you know, you gotta look at the cost factor going into it. <laughs> Here's the they deal. We'll all I imagine these things are expensive. Yeah. yeah every, I would. I would say day. nothing less than four hundred dollars. To be honest with you, I mean. I think that's what's your and that's really small on drones because like um, my the DJI that I'm getting is is like six hundred bucks so it's it's pr- they're pretty expensive but it's not a fighting drone that has lasers to shoot Death Star <laughs> German so yeah, we, you know who we, knows we can't all be douchey guys that Donnie's meeting up with I mean I don't know that's <laughs> true that's true yeah I just can't wait so, for like the group of people that get together that all have these drones at these star wars based drones and they just record all the an entire action fighting scene in the middle of the night like i think that would be super cool the the best part about this is that when this video came out of how rad these things are there's a there's a group of little of dorks that are sitting in their basements going crap why didn't quidditch do this and oh, that would be so awesome they're yeah. just sitting there just cursing <laughs> Just cursing everybody and <laughs> flicking off Star Wars guys like that's just you know they're just well, freaking out right now losing their mind. That's that's next year's uh, yeah. you know sweet surprise is a copycat. flying broom. Hashtag so. Quidditch is a copycat. No <laughs> hashtag also though uh, flight get a flying test. dragon. Yeah, flight test. Those guys are hilarious and they're trying yeah. to make flight out of other things. So Ooh. yeah, Don't know if we're doing that yet. So we will put a pin in this, and when this price is launched, we will talk about it and debate how um, how immediately we should buy these things and go crash them into each other. <laughs> Yarp. Um, oh, I can't wait. That day will come, my friend. So can't until wait then, to break a five hundred dollar toy. Yeah, right. <laughs> until then, I am going to uh, just put a pin in this for now. Uh, we have one final article, and it's really just about another sensation. We talked about Westworld on HBO um, a few, or I guess, last episode. Wow. Um, not Waterworld, Westworld. Um, this the particular, West. the particular focus on this one, it's it's actually called uh, Black Mirror. And if you haven't seen it, I've watched a few episodes, and let me tell you right now, it's it's certainly not for everyone. But uh, with that said, it is it is for uh, a few folks out there like myself that are kind of intrigued by the human mind and what. Uh, where society can go with the constant uh, bell curve of, of technology in terms of as, as technology gets better, people get uh, smarter. And all of a sudden we get to a point of where, you know, things like Black Mirror and the, the, the episodes that they show could become reality. Um, for those of you like Laos Man who do not understand what Black Mirror is, it's a Netflix series. Um, it's fantastically done. It's insanely well directed and edited and, and put together. It seems like a, a very high budget, but yet um, still TV realm. So it's no Marvel movie or anything like that. But they have actors, you know, that were in Jurassic World, that were in uh, House of Cards, Downton Abbey, Downton Abbey, all sorts of stuff. So there's really high name, high high profile names in this and each episode which is again very unique for tv each episode three seasons strong now is a different one so if you didn't watch the first episode it has no impact on episode two three four five or season two three four five six seven whatever it may be so it's a very unique premise which i really enjoy but each one kind of contemplates society and technology and how there's a point to where it gets where you can see some of these things happening, but it never turns out well. Spoiler alert, never turns out well for the <laughs> protagonist or whoever it is that you're watching. And sometimes it's not a protagonist. It's, it's a bad guy. Um, Dane, I know you, you watched the trailer. And I know you didn't get to see any of the episodes. I've seen three, so I'll, I'll chime back in in a second. But what were your initial thoughts just from seeing the kind of launch and like the direction that they're kind of going in? I think it's cool. I like Netflix shows. I think they can kind of go to a different level, which is good. I'm a huge fan of um, Stranger Things, you know, House of Cards, all those Netflix uh, shows. Now, is this one, are all three seasons on Netflix or just, I read that Netflix picked up the third season. 
All three are on Netflix. It's been renewed is for that... a fourth season, I believe. But all three okay. are on Netflix right now. And Ryan can speak okay. to like how the progression is because it's not like 8, 10, 15 episodes. It's literally like a limited amount per season. But the third one here, I think, has like six or seven episodes. It's interesting concept, kind of like a Twilight Zone, a, new, a contemporary Twilight Zone, which is cool. <laughs> um, every episode is different. You know, the different premise – each time something crazy to take from that from the from the trailer it looks it's kind of quirky and and you really gotta pay attention and think about what's going on so um all together it looks really good i'll probably fire it up this weekend and see what it's all about i do suggest checking it out because it is it's really um it's interesting, but if you read like the bios, some of them you just don't want to watch. <laughs> and some, of them, and some of them you do just. I read that it's really depressing. Yeah. Depressing. A lot of them. It, so and that's what my wife thought too, because I, I punished her by making her watch them with me just to see if she liked any of them. <laughs> and there's, there's one episode that I think she might like. I don't know, but that's in three seasons. There's one episode. So, it's like. <laughs> but see, Are they all get, like totally like crazy. Completely different universes. Completely different time frames and situations and whatever transition yeah. that's happened from society so it's just very unique and the thing that i liked about it is that yeah it's, it's a little bit depressing because like just, spoiler alert whatever the first episode or one of the episodes that i watched initially was where this dude woke up every day in this room it's kind of like um i don't know if it's minority report or whatever but it, like he looked out he woke up in his bed and it looked like he was in a like a plane or like somewhere in like a like a, like a, a field or something and then all of a sudden the tv snapped and it was at and if he wanted to skip past the ads, it cost him points, not money, yes. but points. So yes. then to get points back, he had to go into this room and ride a bicycle for like eight hours like it was his job. But there was no point to doing that. But then when he stopped doing that, he went back to his room and there were ads. And again, there was like porno and, and all sorts of weird stuff. And if he skipped them, it would deduct him points. So like you're thinking, OK, well, in this society <laughs> they've built, they're trying to get these points and to do these things to just to survive but in order to do that they have to pointlessly ride this bicycle for for a reason unknown but if you think about that in terms of okay so we're in a society now maybe they're in a space station which again they don't explain is that how they power it or how they make people busy so they don't get into trouble and then you go back and to fuel the space station it takes sponsorship out like it's just crazy stuff And, and it's a little bit depressing yeah but at the end of the day you think about it as could society ever evolve to that point and how many pornos do I have to watch to ride a bike? I mean, that's the real issue here. Like, how many pornos am I watching to watch to ride a bike? Well, well and, and to, 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 to go on to that, Donnie, that was the episode that I, I fell in love with the show with. The first one from season one, I was just like, wow, that's really crazy. This dude has to, you know, and if you if your virgin ears need to cover yourself with some earmuffs, the guy had to have sex with a pig. Like, it was really weird, but he was the, a politician though. Like he was a politician. You're missing yeah. all the details. I really want to watch I mean, it now. <laughs> yeah, right. I feel like right. 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 it was like a knockoff Disney thing. Like I don't know what you're going to say. No. Oh, it, that, Disney is definitely. It all not, went bad. It all went bad for you, right but, there. But that was my take on it, and th- this is where I kind of fell in love with it because. It, you know, I'm a huge fan of 1984. I'm a huge fan of Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, and I love all of his philosophical points of views and things like that. And what I think this show does is it plays on and antagonizes, you know, us systematically as as human beings on this earth and all of the science and things of that nature. And it really makes him seem very realistic in the near future. But also, if this is what we develop, like I think the third episode was a memory device that played in the back of our membrane of our of our neck and allowed us to visualize and see memories and record memories as they happen in real life but then we could go back and actually watch them and analyze them this is kind of a play on that where if we actually develop this technology we develop these things how they can adversely affect us so the human nature is to always progress and make things better in life but does that technology or does that progression actually end up helping us and if so, how long does it help us before it hurts us? That's what and, I really love about that show. 
And there's a strange piece of it that almost relates it back to Star Trek. You know, Star Trek had yeah. uh, little communicators that you had in your hand. And you could just put up to your head and you could talk to people. But in the 70s, that's crazy. It's a mother effing <laughs> iPhone. It's just right? an iPhone. That's, that's all it is. And, and what do we spend? Not that we're not in our cars right now listening to this podcast or anything. Right. But Internet radio? We spend, <laughs> how do we get that? It's all on our devices. Yeah. It's how we communicate. If we're lost, well, we don't pull out a map from you know, the um, little thing in our car, what's that called? The glove box. Thank you. I don't pull out a map. We pull up Google. You want to yeah. sound like a ridiculous, <laughs> hilarious amount of uh, future sci-fi? Because you did. You sounded it, like somebody so, who doesn't know what a glove box is. Well, there you like, go. It's, it oh, makes geez, you like, what it, what like, an old, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. But it oh, never they, worked they out. They glove boxes on Millennium Falcons. But y'all right. wouldn't know about that. All right. But so I was just going to say that the hero in the story can tend to get lost in his own demise of, of his pursuit of conviction. And that is, seems to, and that seems to happen in a lot of the episodes, which which that, is interesting and yeah. slightly depressing. But but I, we can. Yeah. I, what I want to do is, you know, I'll, I'll put a pin in this too, and we'll we'll come back to it in a, in a week or two or a couple weeks. Maybe you guys get a chance to check it out or whatever. We we can come back to it for sure. I mean, but I you'll actually I'll, like it, Laos. I I do. I think if you watch uh, one you, or two episodes, you'll you actually got, like. It. Don't you think got, so. Yeah, I don't think he will either because he he doesn't like like a good solid depressing story. But if you get a chance, man, uh, Fair enough. they're only they're only an hour long, so just just muscle through it one oh, time. Only an hour? <laughs> I've got eight of those a day. That's yeah, hardly anything. Uh, you can go fuck yourself. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm telling you, just just. <laughs> I drill that in. Initially, when you find when you find that you're playing Xbox for whatever, just throw one on it and see if you can get into it. Just just to see. Again, the fun, the, the best part about this, which I really like, is you can it, it provides now three seasons where you can thumb through the the descriptions of each one, and you say, yep. "Oh, this guy's stuck in a VR reality. Let me see what that's about." And you put it on. You know, it's it's just kind of if you get a chance to check it out, you might appreciate it. And I don't like it because I love the characters or I love the story. Every single, every single one is different. So it's like a telly movie, like every time it's like a little different story that has a start and a finish and it's clean and it's different and it, and it makes you think about stuff. But that mm -hmm. seems to be kind of the mentality that I have when I watch all these wacky shows. Um, but I really did like it. It's just one of those things that now I'm going to have to watch by myself because my wife hates it. So it doesn't really matter. But any final <laughs> thoughts, guys? It's a yeah. great show hole filler in between uh, Walking Dead episodes, to be honest with you. So yeah, that's the thing uh, to touch on one <laughs> other point. <laughs> Um, you know, for anybody who has some difficulty uh, transitioning between uh, the ver the VR points where they they can't see anymore or they've died or whatever, uh, you know, you've already died. So like the reality setting in, like I, I don't know how to put it, but I feel like if you if you die in a VR game, like somebody should just come up with a big pillowcase and just go. Wow! Like, and get you. Well, well, it's funny that you say that. And this is the last point that I want to make about this. But watch season three, episode four. It's 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 a weird episode because there's two ladies. They fall in love. They don't fall in love. Whatever. But the premise of it kind of speaks to what you just said. It's basically what would happen if you could survive in a VR world after you died forever. I mean, what? Think, think about that. Your family could visit you. People could talk to you. It's a really cool episode. It's a little bit hard After to get into. After you died? Just, you, I'm not going to spoil it anymore. Okay. No, but that's fine. You get, you get about 50 I'm minutes sold. in, you're, and you're like, okay, 50 minutes has gone by. I'm <laughs> done with this thing. But, but the premise is, is, is really interesting, and I'd love to see what you guys think about that because at the end of the day, I mean, you've got to imagine that we are, we are a stone's throw away from – really getting into some of this bizarre technology that could accomplish some of this stuff so check it out and that's all i want to say about black mirror we will definitely come back to it because i think i've, I've beat it like a dead horse we're we're, we're good to go that's an good, episode too i think interesting show <laughs> it's an interesting show so to wrap things up here we've been going for uh for about an hour now at this point which is which is perfectly fine we're trying to keep things a little bit shorter we're sorry for for the guys that that um that have been tuning in uh, and girls out there uh we've been doing 90 minute episodes hour 15 we really apologize we're trying to tone this in we just we start talking on stuff and we really we really get into it so um please hashtag Grimmasters club cast let us know hey we want more content longer content talk more about beer talk more about 
uh, relevant TV shows, talk more about this weird geeky stuff that you guys are into. That's cool, man. Let us know. Okay. Please do. We're on YouTube. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. Um, we are everywhere. So please just, just hashtag Remasters Club cast and we will listen to what you're saying. We are community uh, driven. You know, uh, that's what we're trying to do here is answer questions and talk to folks. So just let us know. Next week will be the, I guess, week and a half, week, two weeks before Thanksgiving. So what we're going to do there is probably a very special Thanksgiving episode. So we're going to grab some pumpkin beers or some fall beers or, or Marzins or whatnot to try and pair them up with um, some Thanksgiving food. So stay tuned for that one. It should be really fun. We're going to launch that again before Thanksgiving. So if you tune in here, you'll have plenty of time to go to your liquor store, grab a couple of beers, and then impress the in-laws or your family or your wife or girlfriend and say, you know what that roast turkey goes really well with? This beer, um, which is Honestly, a lot of them will be Matilda. Just get to Matilda. It's so good. Um, but, boys, uh, where can they find us uh, besides YouTube, Twitter, Facebook? Um, you can actually click the link below. Um, help us out with our Amazon uh, affiliate link. So if you click that, it um, doesn't do anything. doesn't cost you anything. You basically just go on to Amazon, shop like you normally would. The wizard's up top. Send us a little bit of bucks if you buy something after using our link it's extremely helpful it's a cost-free way to help keep the lights on here for the show um besides that you can find um, me here um at brewmasters club again facebook twitter uh rye guy where can they find you they can find me at brood boy 813 on the twitter machine and uh just want to say one more time congratulations to the chicago cubs on a job well done so it's been a great episode great time sharing with you guys so. Mr. Dano. Find me at DT Mert on the Twitterverse. And Mr. Lausman. I think he his mic may be muted, um, but I know you can actually find him on Twitter. <laughs> at, yep, Mr. Lausman. <laughs> at One Mr. Lausman. Yeah. No. You can always find me let's, at Mr. Lausman. Hold on. Let's give it let's give it a clean take there. Mr. Lausman, where can they find you? You can always find me at Mr. Lost Man here in Lakeland, but uh, if you ask me, everyone else has been muting their mics, so it's been ridiculous to keep up with this. Perfect. You can find me at Mute Boy Hashtag Lost is a mute. Just say <laughs> Nope. Definitely not a mute. Muted. I Muted can actually red. talk with my mouth, so deal with it. Everybody Lost can talk with his mouth. Everybody, thank you again so much. We appreciate you on SoundCloud. We appreciate your uh, comments, your uh, tweets uh, at Brewmasters Club Cast. Please let us know what you think. Tell us how we can improve. Tell us what you want to talk about. Give us some topics. We'd love to answer your questions. We have ties to brewers. We can talk to, to our brewery friends, the distributors. Just let us know what you want to answer. We will figure it out or find it out for you. Uh, we do appreciate you listening to us. And everyone, have a safe weekend. Thank you so much for being here on International Stout Day. We do appreciate you. You've been listening to the official podcast of the Brewmasters Club, craft brews and geek news. Grab a beer with the guys and be sure to subscribe to catch additional content. Add this podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. Chat with the guys on Twitter at Brewmasters Club and Facebook and online at www.brewmasters.club. Cheers. <laughs>